Let's do an improper integral. Whoop, whoop. So this is our function, and we're going to find the improper integral from two to infinity, and we're gonna do it properly with limits and everything. We're not gonna do what I normally do and just think of infinity as something I can whack in and call it a day. Right, first things first, we're looking at this function now. Hopefully you're all going, but, but, but Nick, we can obviously split this into partial fractions because this will factorize into, that's an x squared minus one, which is x minus one, x plus one, and an x squared plus one. So, this is obviously gonna split into a over x minus one, plus b over x plus one, plus cx plus d over x squared plus one. All right, the numerator, one order less than the denominator. So, um, really we've got a few things we can do, but let's multiply it all up. That tells me that four x is a times x plus one, x squared plus one, plus b times x minus one, x squared plus one, plus cx plus d times x squared minus one. Okay, we can do this in a bunch of ways. I'm gonna compare coefficients because that's just how I'm feeling. So, uh, highest one on the right is an x cubed, isn't it? Now, I shouldn't get any x cubes. Now, how many would I get? I would get a x cubed, I get a b x cubed, and I get a cx cubed. So a plus b plus c has to equal to nothing. How about x squared? Well, again, I should get no x squared. Now, how could I get x squared here? I could get a x squared, a times one times x squared. I could get b times minus one times x squared. Now, this gets a little bit tricky. I could get, um, no, just a d, just dx squared over there. Yes. Yes, yes. The fact there's no middle terms in any of these is making my life an awful lot easier. Now, this one is going to be trickier. This one is going to be trickier. Now, how many x's? I need four x's overall. How could I get x's? A times one times x. Oh, maybe not. B times x times one. C times minus one. Oh, okay. I see how it is. All right. And now it's just a case of, oh, and finally, just the constants. I don't know, call it k, whatever you want. I should get no constants. And that will be a times one times one, minus b, and then minus d. So I don't know. Um, one, two, three, four. I have a sneaky feeling that if I do equation two minus equation four, I will get zero is nothing, nothing is equal to 2d, which tells me that d is zero. And then equation two will therefore tell me that a is equal to b. Um, cool. Now then equation one is gonna tell me that c is minus 2a at that point. Then we put all of that into equation three and it should all come out. So four is a plus a minus c, so plus two a. So that tells me a is one, tells me b is one, tells me d is nothing, and tells me c is minus two. Awesome. So, tells me a is one, b is one, Tells me C is minus two. Doo, 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 doo. Et voila. Right, haven't even started integrating yet. Oh, what a to-do list, what a to-do list, but that was fun. You could also have started plugging in values of X, minus one, one, two, so on and so forth. Some bits would have fallen out of that as well. I didn't know, I just felt like doing this. I think that, that does ring a bell. Okay. So now, 
what we need to do is integrate this stuff. Now we're going to go from 2 to A, right? And then we will let A go to infinity, but this is going to be useful for us as a result. Now this is, that's nice, that's ln of x minus 1, that's ln of x plus 1, and beautifully I've got 2x on top, x squared plus 1 in the denominator, that is the derivative of that, so I can call that ln of x squared plus 1. And quite gloriously, this comes out as ln of that times that, which is x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1. Isn't that beautiful? Between 2 and a. So that will give me ln a squared minus 1 over a squared plus 1 minus ln of uh, 3 over 5. And now we're going to let a tend to infinity, and at that point, a squared minus 1 over squared plus 1 is going to tend to 1. And ln 1 is, of course, 0 minus ln of 3 over 5, which is ln of 5 over 3. Boom! Love it. Right, um, don't want to rub that out because it looks pretty. So let's go over here. Find the mean value of f of x between 2 and 4. Well, that will be 1 over 4 minus 2, the integral between 2 and 4 of f of x dx. Well, I can now just use this result with a is equal to 4, which is 1 half ln. Let's put 4 in. Uh, 15 over 17 minus ln of 3 fifths. Um, which is, if we tidy that up, divide those two, 3 and 15 cancel, that is 1 half ln of 25 over 17. Yeah, which is almost very, very nice because that half could then be a square root on the 25, but it doesn't do anything nice with the 17, so I'm just going to leave it there. I don't think I gain anything by trying to actually muck about with that. All right, definition of a mean value. But here, the nice thing uh, about having done this properly with the upper limit of a and then playing around with a is I'd already done most of the work for this point here. Noise. A little bit of improper integrals and a mean value there. Good, clean family fun for everyone. If you find my content useful, uh, educational, I don't know, it brings you joy in life, and you've got some exams coming up. Do check the link down in the description for this video. We are running cram courses ahead of these exams. That means that if you sign up the night before your further maths exams, we will be running a five hour stream live where you can come and ask questions. We'll be doing exam style prep. Basically gonna boost you up, make sure that you are feeling prepared and ready to take on that further maths exam the next day. If you sign up, we'll also throw in the same thing, but for A-level maths as well. So do go check it out. Link in the description below. I'm Nick. This was some maths. See you next time.